Hello everybody and welcome back again to our second video which is about push over analysis, driving push over analysis and the capacity curves using, using ETABS version 18. As we know, we have done the SAT 2000 software. Now we are going to use ETABS. Okay, here is the ETABS softwares, which is version 18. You can see the interface of the ETABS is similar to the SAP 2000. We have the toolbar here, we call it the, the toolbar. Here we can see the quick keys of the toolbar, and we have the drawing bar. Same as ETAB, file, new model, or you can go directly from here, new model, or you can click here, new model. Here the recent model, if you have done a modeling before, you can use the recent model directly in the history. And here's the latest news we have CSI CAD, Revit, Safe, version 23, 2000, and etc. All the CSI, all the CSI company, all the release of ETABS and the product of ETABS release update here. We have version now 19. Okay, so we have version ETABS, version ETABS 18. So we can go to new model, click on this new model, and you will see the model initialization window. You will go to use built in setting with. We use metric as a unit, steel section database. This is the depth database of the steel section, which is the manufactured fabricated steel sections around the world. We can have in Euro, in Russia, in India, in China, Australia, Americans. Our model is related to concrete, not for the steel. So I'll go to the American code here. You can go to American code, you can go to Euro code as well. I will do it as American code. And you can go to Euro code for concrete design uh, 2004. This one, you go to 2004. So I will keep it as it is by default. American code, the unit is metric. And click OK. So we have this uh, window, we have grid, and we have a story, and we have the options like a blank, grid. Here we don't have the 2D frames. We need to do it by ourselves using the grid system. Okay, so we go to custom grid system. We have five stories. Typical story height, we leave it as it is, 3.2. As we have done in SAP 2000, 3.2. And go to edit the grid system. We have the grid system in X direction. And we have in Y direction. In X direction, we have three bays. Each base four meter, eight, and 12. Okay, so we have in y direction, no need for y direction because I need it. I need it in, in I need only in the 2D frame. Click OK. We have the story height here. And edit 3.2, 3.2, and click OK. Error in performing the new model. Why? Have error here. Let me see the error modified grid. No. From here, maybe need to put at least one. So now it is fixed. This one we need at least one uh, in my direction. Only this one, make it zero, and it will be fixed. Okay, so we have this. You can see that the ETA doesn't have the 2D frame section. We need to develop this by ourselves by grid system. The grid system is 3D. You can see in the 3D. 
this is a 3D. I need it in the elevation exit. Elevation exit. No. No. This one. Yeah. So you can see. You can see base story one, story two, story three, story four, and story five. Okay. So in this case, we need to define the material as we did in SAP 2000. We find the material for 1000 PSI, change it to C25 megapascal. And we can go to 24 kilometer cube, change this to 4700. Multiply, multiply, multiply square root. I click OK. So we define the concrete material. Now we need to define the frame sections. Define the frame sections. We have several frame sections defined by default. No need for them. Add new properties. Concrete. OK. OK. I need this one to be column. 40 by 40 as we did so here will be 4000 400 here would be 400 okay you can change this one to, to column okay great change this to 12 change this to 12 change this to 4 number of rebars as we have done this up to thousand change this one to 300. Okay, you can see now the column has been defined. Click OK. A new property, concrete. I need to beam, which is 40 times 30. The drop beam is, the depth is 400. The width is 300. So we need to change this to beam. Change this one to beam. And click OK. So we have to find the beam and the column. So we define the beam, we define the material, we need to draw them. Okay, how to draw them? We have here from the tool of the quick quick drawing bar something called draw beam column. Okay, I click on draw. I need the frame. Which one? Okay, I need first column. Okay, click on the column. Here, example, and I need to draw this one to here, and this one to here, and this one to here. Okay, so this is for the column. I want to click for the beam, the beam from here to here, four meters from here to here, and from here to here. So now we have draw this using column. I need to draw for the rest, right? So assign, select, select, edit, replicate, story, five, four, three, two. You can see now the replicate is okay. Okay. So now I can draw the columns again from here to here, from here to here, as well from here to here, and from here to here. I think I did mistake. This is beams. This is beams. So I need to change this to columns. Remove this. And draw for the column. This one. This one, and this one, and this one. So now we select all these columns, edit, replicate. I need this one to remove in X direction. I one, two, three by four meters and number three. 
you can see we have done modeling the frame using etabs and now we have a sign if you click on the beam we see beam we can click on the column we see column right now we need to change the boundary conditions similarly as in SAP 2000 assign a joint restraint and click fixed it will change to fix support you can see this Extrude frame. See in the extrude, you can see now the frame, the beams, and the column is modeled in using the grid system, not to the not you not to the grid in this eta, but you need to develop this one in the grid system. Okay. So after defining the boundary condition and defining the material and the sections, it's time to define the load pattern as a superimposed load. And you can use live load. Oh live load is already defined here. Great. So I need to define the that's it the lateral load. Okay, and name it others. So we have lateral load superimposed that load live load and that load. Okay, so I need to select all the beams. Select all the beams. Select all the beams. Assign frame loading. Distribute it. I need the SIDL and the gravity direction. I need 15 K Newton, right? 15. So now we have 15 K Newton per meter run distributed on the beams, as well as I need for the live load. Click on PS this one at the previous selection and change the live load. And I change this to 20. And now it is 20. So we have for the beams loading, live load, and superimposed load. Okay. So this is the load, gravity load. You can see the gravity load on the frame is distributed. Okay, after defining the loading, we need to define to define the diaphragm, right? Diaphragm for each joint. Assign join diaphragm, add a new diaphragm, reach diaphragm, and new diaphragm. This three we have four or five, we have five. Okay, go one by one. This is the first floor. First floor, yeah, select all the joint and assign D1. So we have the from the one. For this one, we have D two. We have D three. We have D four. And we have D five. Right, so this joint is T2, and this joint is D1. No, this one should be T1 assigned, joint constraint. Okay, D1, so D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, all the diaphragm have been assigned. See this one, D2, this one, D3, D4, and D5. 
double check here double check here great okay great so we define the diaphragm in this case we have to find the diaphragm we have to find the load pattern we have to assign the boundary condition we have to find the section materials and now we need to find the joint load that are load that are load assign the joint assign frame joint load it's a lateral direction we have an x direction global x this is one thousand kilo newton click open see now you will see all the the load is is applied you can see now the loading have been assigned and applied on the building 1000 kilo newton is the third load great so now we need to define the load cases or before defining the load cases we need to define the plastic hinges Define section properties of frame one and hinges. Concrete name this Select properties, frame sections, and select uh, beam or the columns, data columns, and assign frame hinges for the column point one, for point nine, and double OK. So we apply the plastic hinges on the columns. Now we need to apply this one for the beams. Select object type properties frame sections and beam. Assign frame hinges for the beam. And now for the beam. For the beam is and column have been assigned. So now we need to define the load cases. Add new case. Nonlinear static. Add load pattern that load. Okay, great. And name this nonlinear that load nonlinear. Okay. Add a new case, nonlinear static. Continue from the nonlinear dot load. Name it initial. And add the live load. And the SIDL. Another case, nonlinear static. I name it final. POA continue from the initial and assign the pattern is lateral and here you can change this to displacement control you can just change this to multiple state click OK and click OK so now we have defined now we need to save as this one since as Name this one like BOA tabs. BOA tabs model. And you can now run the analysis. And we'll wait for the result.
this will take a few times, a few minutes to finish. Now we can see the final POA. Okay, you see the foam shape of the, of the building, classic changes formation. Okay. So this is the foam shape of the display, static push over curve. You can see this is the curve for the push over analysis which is similar to the SAP 2000 maybe here it takes 17 steps and the SAP 2000 it takes 26 steps so you can see display the formatted table you can see the table here in the SAP 2000 it was like 200 millimeter here 140 but the, the base here is the same okay you can collapse stage this is the elastic zone this is the plastic zone here is the collapse stage can summary report you have some report for this one so now you can see the deform shape on it push over changes and you can go to session See this placement here at the top 142.477. Next direction. So, similarly, if you want to draw the bending moment diagram for the square or side load, for example, you can see it's a bending moment diagram. You can see the shear force diagram. You can see the axial force. So, you can see. Okay, so this is for ETABs, and thank you so much for listening. Again, show the static push over here, and you can draw. Thank you so much, and have, have a nice day. Goodbye.